Hi, it's Leah from a Relaxed Gal Beauty Channel, and I wanted to share with you in this video all about my latest relaxer touch up and my trip to the salon. So, before I dive in about how my relaxer touch up went, give you a rundown of the current status of my hair, um, I wanted to make sure that you are a subscriber. Have you subscribed? If not, then go ahead and click the little red button down below to be a subscriber to the Relax Gal Beauty channel. And then if you wanna go the extra step and have YouTube let you know when I upload new videos, then you can hit the bell button that's next to the red subscribe button. Okay, so for the Relaxer Touch Up, reason why you're here. So, um, yeah, it was kind of interesting. The whole touch up went well for me. It probably didn't go as well for my stylist and I'll tell you why. But first, let me start with the whole scheduling the appointment. So typically I go 12 weeks between my relaxer touch-ups and for some reason this time around I totally didn't think about scheduling my appointment. I didn't think about counting the weeks between my touch-ups. So after my last one I just kind of went about my life. I was really busy. I was traveling a lot in August. There was a lot going on at work. There was a lot going on personally. So I was just like not even paying attention to it and it didn't hurt or help I don't know depending on which way you look at it that my hair was just totally behaving there was no real issues I wasn't experiencing any extra breakage shedding my hair wasn't abnormally dry I wasn't having issues with the two textures it was just going about my usual day-to-day -day. I had no issues so I didn't even realize that it had been 12 weeks until I was lying in bed late one night and I was like, hmm, I probably need to schedule a touch up at some point. So let me go ahead and count and see where I am and then I can figure out when the 12 weeks, you know, are up. So I look at my calendar and I start counting and I'm like, oh, there's week 12 and that was last week. <laughs> so then I'm like, well, this is like Wednesday. There's no way my hair is going to be ready for a touch up on Saturday, particularly because this was during a time period where I hadn't washed my hair for like two weeks. So my hair and scalp would have been dirty going into, like really dirty, going into the touch up. I had been scratching a little bit and so I was just like, my scalp and hair just would not be ready for it and I didn't really want to put my hair and scalp in a situation where it might end up having negative effects. Um, more so than me just waiting an extra week. So I ended up scheduling my touch up for 14 weeks post. I was like, my stylist may not be happy with that, but it is where we are at this point, And I feel like it's probably the best option. So because I hadn't washed my hair in like two weeks, hadn't really been prepping my hair for the touch up, I had to do some serious prep in terms of how I was going to wash my hair the week before and then what I was going to do with my hair during that week in between when I washed it and when I was gonna get my touch up. So before I actually get into the touch up, let me quickly share with you the products that I used and what I did to prepare my hair for the touch up. So to prepare my hair this time around for a touch up, I really wanted to make sure I was doing a good balance of moisture and protein, that I was making sure my hair was hydrated, my scalp was hydrated, my new growth was hydrated, and also that I was adding some strength to my relaxed hair and the place of demarcation just to help, you know, make sure that it could withstand the relaxer and that I wouldn't have any breakage during the appointment, which typically doesn't happen, but that's usually because I use protein the week before, I um, get my relaxer. So as part of my prep, I did something I typically don't really do much anymore, but if you look at my blog at relaxgal.com and look at any of my past wash day posts, I did this quite a bit, and it was pre-poo. So a pre-poo is just basically doing a pre-shampoo conditioning treatment or um, putting some conditioner on your hair before you shampoo. And what I did is I used two different products. I use this one, which is from Suave Professionals. It is their Keratin Infusion, inf Infusion, Keratin Infusion Smoothing Conditioner. And so it's a conditioner that I haven't really been using much anymore. And I was like, I need to get rid of it because I need to start clearing out my cabinet because I've got too many products in there. But then I also um, kind of mixed it a bit with this from Shea Moisture, which is their 100% virgin coconut oil rehydration treatment mask. I don't care for it as a mask by itself, but it works really well as a pre-poo. And I mixed the two together, which gave me that protein moisture balance that I was kind of looking for. 
And then to cleanse my hair, I use this shampoo from Shea Moisture. It's the Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strengthen and Restore Shampoo. This is a great sulfate-free clarifying shampoo. And so when I am going for a relaxing touch-up the week before, I like to clarify my hair just to make sure I give a nice clean palette. And I find that my relaxers take better when I do that. After I shampoo, I deep conditioned and I used this, the High Porosity Moisture Correct Mask and it's got some protein in it, but it's also very good with moisture um, and my hair really likes it. So I use that and then to um, detangle my hair and um, also when I blew it out as a heat protectant, I used the Jane Carter Solution Revitalizing Leave-In Conditioner and then followed all of that up with um, my go-to leave-in conditioners this one oh you can barely see that one but this one is from tgin it's their green tea super moist leave-in conditioner i've talked about this several times and then also this truba made beautiful revitalize i mean nourishing sorry leave-in conditioner and then followed all of that up with a natural oil which i've got here which was grapeseed oil so i used all of these products to help um prepare my hair on um, the wash day before my relaxer touch up and then I used my leave-in conditioners and sealed with my oil a couple of times during the week And then the night before I actually don't have it here if I got it But I used some castor oil to help base my scalp The night before the touch-up so now for the salon visit for the touch-up um, As I kind of alluded to it went fine for me. So I went to the salon my stylist based my scalp she sectioned my hair um, because she likes to do touch-ups in sections based on the thickness of your hair and how long each section um, it, each section of my hair tends to process slightly differently and some need more time than others to process um, so she does my hair in sections and then my hair processes for about 17 minutes so we got all that done she rinses me out does the neutralizer does the shampoo and then she puts the conditioner in and puts me under the hooded dryer for about 15 minutes. And then after that, um, she was gonna rinse out the deep conditioner and then she was like, man, I don't feel so good. She was feeling kind of nauseous and she was having waves of nausea come over her and she had been feeling fine before, but all of a sudden she wasn't. So she went in the bathroom for a little bit. I'm still sitting there with the deep conditioner in my head. I'm like, whatever, I, I don't want her to like start throwing up all over me. So go do what you need to do. And she came out of the bathroom about 10 minutes later and she said she was still feeling nauseous. And I said, why don't you just like sit down? Like I saw the deep conditioner in my head. I didn't mind sitting with it for another few minutes on my head, whatever. Um, I was like, sit down. She was like, no, 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 I'm gonna do this. So she rinsed out the deep conditioner and then she started, you know, going through blowing me out. And as I was sitting there, she's blowing me out. I'm like, if she throws up on me, I was like, you just have to be nice. Don't freak out. It'll ruin your day. But she's not feeling well. And all during this process of her blowing me out, she's like not feeling quite so well. She's like, I could see looking in the mirror in front of me that she was when the waves of nausea were kind of hitting her. So I'm like thinking like, just don't throw up on me. Just don't throw up on me. But I'm telling her like, why don't you sit down? Like I was like, or you can put me under the hooded dryer. We can get most of the moisture out and then I can go home and finish my hair myself. And she insisted on doing it. And so I felt kind of bad, but then I didn't. I felt bad because she's blowing up my hair, standing up here, my long thick hair, and she's not feeling well, but then I'm not feeling bad because it's like, I said you can sit down. I said I could do it myself. You know, I could go home and finish my hair and she insisted. So it's like, but she finished my hair. She finished blowing it out. Um, I will show you kind of some pictures or I'll do some video um, and insert it in so you can see what my hair looks like. But um, yeah, overall for me, the touch up went really well. Um, I had no burning whatsoever, which I typically don't have because my stylist is very good about basing my scalp beforehand and making sure that the relaxer is only put on my hair and not put on my scalp. And then that in combination with me um, basing my scalp the night before with castor oil, which is a nice, pretty thick oil. And then also making sure that particularly the week before the touch up, I'm not scratching my scalp or irritating it in any shape or form. Even though she wasn't feeling well, my stylist did look and said that there wasn't any new breakage, no um, new split ends, and that my hair seemed to be growing out fine. 
I was going to get a trim, but because she wasn't feeling well, and I think she also, but she also looked and said like my end still looked fine, so she didn't feel like I needed a trim this time. I would get one the next time around. But there is one little place there is an issue. So you see here this hair. Now I've pointed this out before, I think. Um, notice that I had some breakage in the front of my head. So I've got like these unwanted, unasked for bangs going on here. And so this hair like doesn't want to behave either. It just likes to stick out and everything. But um, I don't know how, why that happened. I haven't been able to figure it out, but it's still there. It's growing out a little bit. So my stylist said to keep it protected, keep it pinned back, keep it moisturized, and hopefully it'll grow out and there won't be any more breakage in that area. So between now and my next touch up, I'm just gonna continue doing what I had been doing before, which is wearing my hair down once or twice a week, just to kind of give it a little bit of a break, making sure that I keep it wrapped up in satin, making sure I'm keeping it moisturized throughout the week, using a leave-in conditioner and natural oil to seal in the moisture, keeping a, a moisture protein balance with my hair, making sure that my ends are just protected in the styles that I wear, whether it's higher ponytails, um, or buns or braids or just to make sure that I'm keeping my hair protected and keeping it hydrated All right, so that is it. That is what happened with my relaxer touch-up That's how I prepped my hair and that's what I'm going to be doing with my hair from now on if you have any questions about my touch-up um, or about any of the products that I mentioned or any of my techniques please let me know in the comments below and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up don't forget, like I said at the beginning of the video, to please subscribe to the Relax Gal Beauty channel. Um, you can do that just by hitting the red button down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.